Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Casio G-Shock 200 meter solar quartz Bluetooth dress watch. And this is model number GST-B100D-1ACR. And you know the drill, we're gonna open this thing up, look at all the features and functions, and there are a ton of them. Check out the build quality, and then I'll let you know what I think of this Bluetooth connected watch from Casio. Also make sure you check out my Amazon page for this and many of my other favorite watches. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field for you. So here you go, typical Casio G-Shock watch box. You have your uh, owner's manual here with your module number on there, the 5513. And you also have a little bit more inside the watch tin. Anybody that's bought a G-Shock knows what comes inside these boxes and tins. There's gonna be a warranty card in here. There it is. There you go, your international warranty card little piece of protective foam, and here is the watch. Now guys, I'm not gonna do a super in-depth review of this watch because there are just too many features and functions to go over, but I'm gonna try to cover as much stuff as I can to give you an overall feel of the watch. Um, so that's kind of what, what, what I'm intending to do. I'll probably end up going longer than I normally do just because there is a lot of stuff to talk about, but I don't wanna get into the nitty gritty and the minutia of this watch because there is a just a ton of stuff uh, that this watch does for you. But anyway, on the left-hand side, let's go ahead and talk about the basic specs. Uh, you are looking at a 54 millimeter case. It is 14 millimeters thick. It's 58 millimeters lug to lug, and I'm counting these little protuberances here. Is that the right word, protuberance? These little things right here. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, it's a, it's on a, a 25, basically a 25 millimeter a bracelet that's that's basically tapering down to a 20 millimeter. So you really want to say a 20 millimeter, but up here it's about 25. Uh, it's 200 meters water resistant, which of course is 660 feet. It does have a mineral crystal. Crystal. It has the Casio 5513 movement with a five month power reserve. It has auto time adjustment. I'll explain that later. It has a date over there at 4:30. Of course, it is Bluetooth connected. Uh, it has world time, a timer, alarm. Uh, it has Neo Bright on the hour and minute hands. It has an auto calendar till the year 2099. It also has a power save mode and it does have a screw down crown over here at three o'clock. Now let's go over the physical features of the watch. I mean, this thing is a beast. It's a big watch. Uh, this is part of Casio's G Steel line, one of their many new watches in the G Steel line. I think I first reviewed a G Steel maybe a gosh, a year ago. Uh, it wasn't anywhere as complex or complicated as this one, uh, but I like the feel of these things. They're a little bit too big for me. Um, I'm really kind of changing my opinion on watch case sizes. Uh, one of my <laughs> frequent commenters, uh, his name is Fat Boab, F-A-T-B-O-A-B. -A -A I have to give him some props, he was right. Um, I think my sweet spot now is really between like 40 and 42 millimeters. I think that's anything over above, you know, above 42 millimeters is just a little bit too big for me. And of course this thing is 54 millimeters. So this is a beast of a watch. It is very heavy. Uh, there is a version that comes on a rubber strap that greatly reduces the weight. Uh, so you might want to check that out. There are probably, gosh, six or seven different versions of this watch. Dial colors, bezel colors, strap options. Uh, so make sure you can go out there and check them out. There are a ton of different versions of this watch. Um, but anyway, so the physical presence is a big, it's a big watch. Uh, I do like the look. The only thing on the dial that I'm not really crazy about this is a little turbine thing. And I'll explain that later. But everything else I like, other than the fact that some of these things are a little bit small to read, like this dial up here, it's at 12 o'clock. The font is a little bit small, and that's probably because I'm getting old as hell. Uh, and also the AM PM dial right there next to the, uh, what does that say? Uh, the G-Shock uh, screen print. That shows you whether the watch is an AM or PM. It's so small, it's almost next to worthless to me personally. Um, the date actually is pretty big. I like the date. Uh, and everything else is fine. The, the hour, minute, and second hands are fine. They're nice and big. The sub dial for your world time, that's a decent size. Um, I like this stadium style dial where you can see it has the uh, outer chapter ring. It looks like you're in a stadium. That's what I start calling them anyway. Uh, like you're in the Roman Coliseum. I think they're really cool. I love this style of uh, dial that, that G-Shock does. I think it just gives the watch a lot of presence. Really, really like this type of style. And again, I'm so glad they eventually started making you know watches mostly made out of metal. This is actually a hybrid case. 
You have some resin and metal kind of sandwiched together, but it's mostly metal. Obviously, the bracelet's all metal. Uh, the uh, bezel is all metal. Most of the case is metal. And you do have a sandwich of resin in there. Um, so since we're on this side, let's go ahead and look at the buttons. You're looking at some different function buttons over here on the left-hand side of the watch. There's your Bluetooth connected button right there with that red outline. And of course, I'll explain that a little bit later as well. Uh, you do have these really nice lugs. I love these lugs. Really, really cool. I mean, this is this watch is built for some abuse, man. It's also shock resistant. Not only uh, you know being water resistant, but it's a, it's a G shock G shock, so it's definitely water resistant. Uh, you have some nice, and I like the fact they have a little bit of knurling, a little bit of texture on these um, these pushers here. Now the crown, the crown, uh, you 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 would never really have to use the crown if you didn't want to on this watch. But everything you can do on the app with this watch, you can actually manually do on the watch itself. You can do a whole bunch of stuff to this watch, uh, and literally never have to touch the watch itself or uh, unscrew the crown. This is a screw down crown. And another thing, this crown is incredibly hard to unscrew and screw back in because it's really deeply sunk into the case and you have these really huge crown guards. So I think Cassio is kind of telling you, hey, you really don't have to touch the crown unless you really have to. Say you lost your phone, you need to set the watch manually. And like I said, everything you can do on the app, you can manually do on the watch itself. So if you do lose your phone, you're good to go. So anything, what else about the, about the uh, case? That's pretty much it about the case. Real beefy stainless steel bracelet. Uh, you've got a ton of micro adjustments there. Of course, it is a clasp. You have a milled, um, a milled clasp right there. I really like it, a scissor clasp. You have a, um, looks like a signed G-Shock buckle. Again, you have those micro adjustments. You have four micro adjustments there. Um, I like the bracelet. I mean, it's a quality bracelet. This isn't a cheap watch. So I would expect them to put a really nice bracelet, bracelet and they have. Looking at the case back, you get a whole bunch of laser etching on the case back, telling you different specs about the watch. Um, I mean, it's not, it's very, very well built. I mean, this is a beefy, heavy, um, I mean, this watch is built like a tank. It really is. I really, really like the build quality of this watch. Again, a little too big for me personally. Um, but a lot of guys are going to love this watch. And I, I I do like it. I just wish it was just a tad smaller. Would that keep me from buying one? Absolutely not. I mean, you can only get so small on the dial and be able to display the information uh, in the analog mode that this watch does. As you see, there are no you know LCD um, segments in here. This is kind of a really nice hybrid between an analog watch and some digital technology with the Bluetooth connectivity. So I think Cassio's done a really good job implementing just the features that you would really need with a Bluetooth watch without going full bore, you know, smartwatch. I don't like smartwatches. I don't like to, I don't like the the touchscreen interface with a watch uh, with a smartwatch. I like the analog look of a watch a, a, as much as I as much as I can. It's just easier for me to read and faster unless it's a digital with a big big display like say one of the Casio, the G-Shock Rangeman that has a really nice big digital display, so I love those as well. So um Anyway, what else? Um, what else I want to tell you? Okay, so let's start talking about the features. Now, again, there are a ton of features with this thing. It does have world time. Again, it has a timer. It only has one alarm. That's kind of interesting. Most most Casio G-Shocks have like five alarms. Um, it does have Neo Bright, which is pretty bright, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, the auto calendar is till 2099. Uh, it also has a power save mode. So whenever this watch is in the dark for a couple hours, It'll actually go into power save mode. And if you leave it in the dark for a long time, all the hands will rotate up to 12 o'clock and they'll just stay there. It'll keep keeping time internally. But then um, once it's exposed to light, everything kind of jumps back to life and you're good to go. And I think they said in the brochure, it takes about 85 hours for a full charge in bright sunlight. So you take this thing out for a couple of days in the summer in bright sunlight, it's good to go for five months. Um, let me show you a couple of things here. All right. Now, again, I'm not going to go into a full bore review of this thing because there's just a ton of stuff to talk about, but I'm going to go over the basics and I'm going to try to get this thing in focus as I can. All right. If you look at the top dial up there at 12 o'clock, you're going to see the different functions. Okay. Right now we're in timekeeping mode, which they actually, Casio calls uh, calendar mode, which is a little bit confusing. I don't know why they just don't call it regular timekeeping. But anyway, you press the mode button up here uh, left at, um, what is this, about 10 o'clock? And it goes into your different modes. Right now, it's showing the day of the week, which is Tuesday. And then right there, that is your, is that stopwatch? 
you know, stopwatch. Then you go to timer. Then you go to alarm. And then you go back down to timekeeping mode. Okay. Let me do that again. Now this little, this little turbine is supposed to look like a, a, a turbine off a jet engine. This thing to me is, I hate to say it. It's, it's kind of worthless <laughs> because in regular timekeeping mode, I would think that would be, that's supposed to show you your uh, power reserve, but to show her the power reserve, you actually have to press down here and then for like one second and it shows you how much energy you have left in your battery. And it shows you by how much red uh, is in, is, is displayed. So I'll click it here. So that's probably about 25 or 30%. And then it goes back. I don't know why it doesn't show it all the time. I don't, I don't get it. So you press it again and there you go. And then it goes back to showing just a sliver. I, I just I don't get this turbine thing. I never have. This is the one feature about the watch that kind of baffles me. But anyway, let's go back to the different modes. So there's your stopwatch mode. Okay. Now that's whenever you press a function, that little turbine is going to spin like crazy. So you go into your timer. It's going to spin again. Go into your alarm. It's of course it spins again. No reason why. I have no why, no idea why it spins, but it does. Anyway, the six o'clock subdial is going to show what your alarm time is, which I have set to seven fifteen. And again, you can set all of this stuff uh, manually without the uh, the the app on your phone. So again, if you lose your phone, you're good to go. All right, all right. Now I don't currently have this connected with my phone because I'm actually using my Samsung Galaxy S eight. So. When you're in regular timekeeping mode, this six o'clock subdial, that shows your world time, which I think I have set to London, which is six hours ahead, I believe. Something like that. I'll have to look. But anyway, so anyway, that normally just shows you're in regular timekeeping mode. That shows your world time and you can swap these times too. Let me press and hold to see if it connects. It's going to show uh, receiving. And then if the, if the little hand goes to the C, that means it's connected. Let me see. So I don't think I have the, I don't have the app open. Yeah, it's trying to connect and it can't. Yep, it didn't do it. Um, but what it does is if you just press it once, what it does is it updates the time. Press it once, it'll update the time. See, it's trying to get it right now. But then if you press and hold it for two seconds, that's when it opens up the app on your phone. And that's where you can you basically set everything on the watch through your phone. Uh, you can also do the, the hand adjustment. Say your minute hand is not perfectly lining up with 12 o'clock when say it's eight o'clock. And so the hour hands over at eight and the minute hand is maybe a couple degrees to the left or right of the 12 o'clock index. You can actually go through your phone and adjust every single analog hand on this watch through your phone by going plus or minus in the hand when you're push, pushing the button on your watch, uh, pushing the button on your phone, the hands will go back and forth or forwards, you know, forwards or backwards, however many times you want. So you can perfectly align each analog hand with where it's supposed to be. And on the app, it shows you that. In fact, let me go ahead and show you some of the different screens on the app. Um, and I'll show you what they are on the left-hand side of the screen. I can't remember which ones I've took a picture of, but there are quite a few of them. What I'll do is maybe I'll go ahead and put a little caption down there below of which different screens they are. Uh, but this is a very involved app, and I think it works at a distance of three meters. And most people have their phones within three meters of their body almost 99% of the time. So I think that's what Casio kind of counted on. And the cool thing is with this watch is you can always get the accurate time because this watch actually checks it and it updates itself automatically. You don't have to do anything. It automatically updates the internet time on your watch four times a day. Now, unless you're in power save mode or you're setting an alarm, or you're doing something on the watch, this watch will automatically uh, check the time uh, uh, four times a day to make sure you're you're always uh, you always have the correct time on your watch. And notice on your on your phone, you always have the correct time because that your phone is you know connected to the internet and it's getting the atomic clock time from that atomic clock out there in Boulder, Colorado. So if you ever notice, your computers always have the atomic time on them because that's the time they get from the atomic clock out in Colorado. So when you press this connect button, your watch connects to your phone and your phone always has the correct time. So then it always updates itself. It's really, really fascinating. I love it. 
I love the fact that it has a 10 meter, I'm sorry, about a 10 foot range, which is more than enough to ever, ever have to do anything on your watch. So I really like that. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Um, that's guys. I mean, there are a ton of different features on this thing. And again, I don't want to have to demonstrate them. Plus also the fact that I'm using my phone, uh, to film this. So I can't, you know, have a phone down here and show you what to do. Uh, but there are other videos out there that show you every single feature of the watch. If you want to check those out, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what this thing can do. Basically, the whole reason for this button is to synchronize the time. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything else other than connect your watch to your phone. And by pressing it once, it just gets a quick time sync from your phone. That's the whole reason for the button. Um, this one over here, this button over here is a a find button. Now what this does is, say you lost your phone, but you got your watch on. If your watch is within 10 feet of you, you press and hold this button for two seconds and your phone, whether it's on mute, vibrate, whatever, doesn't make a difference. Your phone will emit a pretty high pitched tone so you can find your phone. Now, obviously if you left this at the bar and you press this button, <laughs> yeah, your, your phone will not do anything because it's out of range. But if you're in the house and you lose your phone, this thing is great to find your phone. Um, other functions of light, in fact, let me show you. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and try the watch on real quick. All right, there you go. There's your wrist shot. Really, really nice looking. Not crazy about this turbine thing, but anyway, everything else about the watch I love. All right, let's go ahead and get a loom shot, and then I'm going to demonstrate the LED light as well. All right, you've got the Neo Bright on the hands. Let's actually go ahead and kill the uh, the monitor as well. So Neo Bright's pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, I've actually been pretty impressed with how bright this watch gets. All right, there you go. Not too bad at all, man. And it's glowing brightly. And this will glow. This will glow this way for hours. I mean, not, it'll probably go to about half brightness and glow this way for gosh, at least four or five hours. So there you go. Now let's also check out the LED, which I believe is up here. Now this is a really, really bright LED, and the fact that it illuminates the whole dial is what I really like. Look at that thing. Good grief, man. Now that's a backlight. I can't really call it a backlight because it's really a forward light because it's actually illuminating the face of the watch itself. It's not, it's not illumination from underneath the dial. That is really bright. I love it. Now, of course, when you, when you keep pressing this, this is going to greatly reduce your battery. So you really only want to use the backlight or the forward light, as I like to call it. You really only want to use it uh, when you really need to. So there you go. All right, what else about this thing? Um, is there anything else I forgot? Um, again, I see you have world time. You could swap the world times out. Um, you can, again, adjust everything on this watch that you can on the actual app. Um, that's really about it, guys. And again, there are multiple different dial versions, strap versions, bracelet versions, colors uh, of this watch out there. And uh, I like it, man. I think it's I think it's a really it's going to be a big seller for G Shock. I really do. I love the G Steel line. I think they did a fantastic job of incorporating metal, more metal into their watches, which people have been asking for for years. Um, and that's really, guys, that's about it, man. Anyway, so if you like this video, please please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I would definitely definitely appreciate that. I've got some more stuff coming up, obviously, in the next couple weeks. I had one reviewer saying that I was reviewing too many micro brands, <laughs> and I tend to agree. I got into this micro brand slash homage slash um, knockoff phase for like the last couple of weeks. So I'm bringing back the good stuff. Um, so anyway, so with that being said, guys, that's about it. And, uh, oh, do me a favor, check out my Amazon channel. This will be on my Amazon channel and I'll put a link in the description field for that. So make sure you check that out if you want to buy this watch. And of course I'll have that link and along with the price in the description field. And guys, with that being said, that's it. And it looks like this video turned out to be a lot longer, uh, than I wanted it to be as I knew it would be. Anyway, it's just too much to cover with this watch. You can't make a three-minute video with this thing. Anyway, until I see you all next time, take care.